here with Revzilla and I'm finally getting a chance to get my hands on the new Honda Africa Twin. If you are anything like me, you've seen the release photos and videos from South Africa and you're wondering, when is this motorcycle gonna hit US shores? Well, it's finally here and I am in Moab, Utah, where I'm gonna get a chance to put this bike through its paces both on-road and off. And it's about time Honda gets this bike to the US. When's the last time they had a proper ADV bike here? The late 80s with the Trans Alp? No, I'm stoked to see exactly what this new Africa Twin can do. We're gonna hit on some going, stopping, and handling, and then we're also gonna take a look at the new DCT version just to discuss some of the features available with that. Now, while I'm getting suited up to ride, make sure you go ahead and you subscribe to us on YouTube to keep up with all the video content we have rolling out at Revzilla.com. From first looks to full-on bike reviews to gear reviews, we've got you covered for your moto needs. I'll see you out on the road. here off-road in Moab, Utah, riding the new Africa Twin off-road. We had some on-road fun today. We have some off-road fun. And there are two different flavors of this motorcycle. You can either choose manual or DCT. I am on the DCT version right now. It stands for dual clutch transmission. It basically means automatic. Uh, DCT, it's grown on me being able to just paddle shift. You see my right hand here. I can just paddle shift through the gears. And uh, it's something it takes to get me getting used to, but off-road, it's definitely starting to grow on me. The one place I haven't mastered it yet is lower speeds. Uh, I keep going to feather my clutch, and then I kind of have to stick a foot down. And so I'm not quite used to it yet, just kind of taking off. Now, both bikes manual, as well as the DCT, will have three modes of traction control, and you can turn it off completely. Now, I have it off completely right now, just because I like to just be able to feel that real wheel slide around a little bit more. Uh, but there are three different versions. You can do it with the push of a button, which is great. On the fly traction control adjustment. And both will have ABS, which is disableable. So you can turn it off if you want to, but just the rear wheel. You can't knock ABS off in the front. And I have a, a G button over my right hand dash there, which is unique to DCT. And uh, what that does is it just gives me a little more direct drive to the rear wheel on this bike. This engine is perfect. It's the uh, 270 degree crank on a, on a parallel twin. New engine from Honda. Really just awesome low end torque. I'd be willing to bet the torque curve probably hits just around 3,000 RPM, man. This thing is awesome as far as the, the, just the power it gives you right off the right off the line. And it's also got a throttle by cable system, which is great because you get this great throttle response with the engine overall. It's, it's killer. Brakes, you're looking at a dual Nissan calipers up front and a single Nissan caliper up back. Now the DCT version does have an extra caliper up back which will actuate the emergency brake. If you look at my left hand lever down there, you, uh, you'll notice that it's not an actual clutch lever. It's, a, it's an e-brake. Don't want to confuse that and accidentally pull it in. The brake feel initially is a little bit soft. I would uh, probably end up swapping out with some, some steel braided cables just to get a little bit of feel. Suspension is doing a killer job. You got a Showa suspension up front. You got a ProLink Honda in the rear. Fully adjustable for compression, rebound damping, and preload, man. It's soaking up everything. Like nine inches of travel up front, almost eight and a half something inches of travel out back. Looking at like nine inches of ground clearance. Absolutely awesome job with this. Well, we're gonna go, we're gonna play with this thing off road a little bit. I will catch you with you all at the end of the day. Woo! So we just got back from an epic 100 mile day off road. I am covered in dirt, sweat, mud and grime and I couldn't be happier. I feel like the kid at the end of a roller coaster ride when it's coming into the station and you just don't want the ride to end. If we're up to me, I would go back out on this motorcycle right now. 
for you riders out there that are really looking for something that can traverse long distances, but you can also go off-road with your buddies and have a great time, there were some things that I really liked as standouts, and there were some things that I would change. So just very quickly, the engine on this is absolutely a winner. It just gives me all of my power down low out of this 999cc parallel twin. Absolutely a blast. The power was right there when I wanted it. The other thing that I really liked was the suspension on this. Now this is gonna be a Showa suspension up front. It's got the old ProLink in the back, fully adjustable, so I can really fine tune this to my weight and my riding style. Now you'll notice that this bike is gonna be wearing TKC 80s. They don't come from the factory like that, so keep that in mind. If you are planning on doing any kind of off-road riding, you're gonna have to update the rubber. The rubber it comes with is awesome for street riding, but you're gonna want something beefier if you're planning on tackling off-road situations. So the other thing that I was kind of surprised with is that there's absolutely no crash protection on this bike. If I was gonna put this bike in my garage, I would need crash bars, I would need some Bark Busters hand guards, and then the radiator guards down there, I'd go ahead and upgrade those as well. They're just plastic radiator guards and they're sitting right against the radiator, so one big rock, and you're gonna be spilling coolant all over the road. The other thing that really kind of left me disappointed was the way the dash and the electronics were set up. I really had a hard time seeing the dash. It wasn't bright enough, and there was not enough contrasting for me to see what was going on. And then with the way the electronics are configured, I've got this whole thing set up to go off-road, and every time we come to a stop, hit the kill switch, turn the key, I have to then go back and reselect all the settings for off-road riding. And it would have been easier if they would have just let me hit the kill switch and leave it all on, or if I could have a programmable button system that I could just hit one button and it would all set up exactly as I wanted it. With all that being said, I think Honda did absolutely a fantastic job with their first swing at an ADV bike in over 25 years. Now you'll notice that this is not the same color I started off the day with. You can get the red, white, and black, or you can get the silver. It just so happens that I ended up on the silver for the DCT version. Personally, I would go with the red, white, and black. I think it looks badass. Well, I leave you here to debate which color is right for you. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to keep up with all the video content we have rolling out at RevZilla.com. From bike reviews to gear reviews to first look ride reviews, we have all the videos for your moto needs. Thank you for joining us for this look at the Honda Africa Twin. I'm Spurge, enjoy the ride.